and we had no water. We were on about a half a cup of water a day, uh, so there was no way of washing my pants. So I washed them in the, uh, washed them, I'd say, in the dirt. Uh, came back, and this smell uh, that I had observed when we were at this uh, um, this house in the gym house, uh, it was just the smell was terrible. So I lay down on my uh, in my bed space. Uh, and I could see all the other fellas uh, aware of this smell. So I took took off my shirt, rolled my pants up in it and lay there in my birthday suit. And the fella opposite looked up and said, Edwards, I know why you joined the army, for the glamour of the uniform. And uh, that was the first time that I had noticed uh, um, humour in the camp. Here, here's me uh, uh, with uh, in my birthday suit with my dirty pants rolled up in my shirt and uh, uh, a, a, a ripple of laughter ran up and down that uh, those uh, men lying there. Uh, after about ten weeks, we um, uh, there were there was a fountain over there were two fountains in the uh, in the camp, one here and one down there. Uh, we were still over in the uh, in the in the um, um, the women's uh, section. So we were taken through here down through this gate, down round there, about 30 at a time. And we uh, there we were able to, uh, for the first time in about, oh I suppose about uh, uh, 10 weeks, we were able to wash our clothes and wash our bodies because by now we were lousy with fleas, body lice, um, hair, hair long, fingernails long, um, uh, about 10 weeks uh, growth of whiskers on, we must have looked a terrible lot. Uh, so we, um, then we were brought back uh, up to about here and we were all standing around there uh, in our birthday suits with, uh, we, with our pants and shirts, we'd laid them out on the grass to dry, they'd dry in half an hour. Uh, out of the main gate came um, a, um, a little uh, snappily dressed young uh, uh, British officer. He came to uh, each one of us and uh, introduced himself as uh, Captain uh, John Noel Duckworth, uh, chaplain of the Cambridgeshire Regiment. And he said he uh, had uh, had previous uh, uh, passage with uh, Australians, and he said he liked Australians. Would I? Would we each tell us about ourselves? So when he came to me, well, I said, "Sir, there's nothing much uh, to tell." I said, uh, "We're one of the poor people of our town." And, joined up and here I am. And he then said, would there be anybody of note in your district? And I said, yes, uh, the f uh, two men. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, Squadron Leader Bill Gehring. Uh, Bill had just uh, uh, been awarded a DFC. He was on uh, flying on Coastal Command in Britain. Uh, the, uh, the Germans had just sunk a, a ship, um, the city of Benares, taking a, a British um, children to to Canada, and for that he, he got a DFC. And I said, the other man, I said, as a, a household word, uh, his name in um, in the district. I said he's the patron of. I said he's probably a millionaire. Uh, he's the uh, patron of the uh, turf club, the cricket club, the football club, the golf club. And I said he's been. He's the uh, uh, ski champion of a trade uh, of Australia and the runner-up in the world. Oh, he said, you're talking about Tom Mitchell, my uh, classmate in Cambridge. So, uh, I, 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 just, I couldn't believe it that uh, two people uh, uh, who uh, knew each other were together in Pune Jail. Uh, now, um, I think uh, we, we better move it along now a little bit, uh, Charles. Yeah. If you can tell us how you, uh, how, when you, roughly, in, how many months later you moved to Singapore and just in general terms what conditions were like in Singapore? Uh, well, uh, I had, when I was in Pudu, I, um, I was appointed a, an officer's mess orderly and I made a lot of money. I uh, was paid, being a, a private, I was paid 10 cents a day, so that was 70 cents a week, every week, and uh, I was, uh, uh, there were 100 officers uh, they were all without a batman, and uh, these British officers would come to me and say, Edwards, would you wash me a shirt? Yes, sir, it's five cents. So I was, I was getting 70 cents a week pay, and about two or two dollars fifty uh, a week washing shirts. So I called myself a, uh, a poo-doo millionaire. 
Uh, when we, uh, um, it was rumoured that we were going to um, to um, to Singapore, I uh, tipped that uh, now we got tobacco. Uh, it was sold in a, a caddy, around about a about a kilo, I suppose. It was quite a good uh, good tobacco, locally grown leaf, chopped fine. That they would be craving for a cigarette in uh, in Changi, and I bought up as much as I could. Oh, I suppose about. Uh, Oh, I suppose, uh, say, six or eight uh, kilo of this tobacco. And when I got to uh, Singapore, I was right. Mm. And I made about 500% uh, uh, profit on that tobacco. So mm. I had more money. Yes. Uh, now, that money stood me in very good stead. Uh, I shared everything else with my mates, but not my money. It was too hard to get. Nobody knew I had it. Uh, made a money belt and uh, never ever left my body. Uh, so we were about six weeks, uh, we went into the city and, and worked on jobs in the city there for a while, but in, in, Singapore, in uh, Changi I was only there for about six weeks. I didn't, uh, never got to know uh, Changi very well. Not in the jail, in the barracks. No. Uh, then we were got ready to um, go up to, uh, to Thailand, uh, the land of milk and honey, they, they told us. Now this is about March 1943 this is March, now, isn't it? March Third, I think it was, we took off in 1943, right. yes. yes. Now, uh, can, I, can I just in, interrupt because, I mean, the story of the train journey is well known. Yeah. So if you can just skip that, skip over that and move us to Ban Pong and then yeah, yeah. move on. So uh, we uh, went, by, uh, went by train uh, to, uh, and eventually landed in Ban Pong in Thailand, that was the southern end of the, uh, of the line. Um, we got there a little bit too early for them. We were, we, uh, were roaming around uh, for a week. Um, the ties traded with us, and I realised that uh, uh, the gear I had with me was too much uh, that I'd have to carry it. Now, just as an example, I had knife, fork, and spoon, and I thought, well, I don't I think I'll need the knife and fork, so I sold those. I had a pair of pliers, which I, and I got a very good price for the pliers, uh, and I got it. I got my kit down to a, a carryable um, um, size, but. Um, all the battalions before us had all been marched up the line, but we were lucky again. We were we were trucked up to um, Tarso. Uh, from Tarso, the uh, can, can I just interrupt you there? Uh, when you had that period of doing nothing, were you at Banpong or were you up at Gunjanaburi? Oh, we were at, 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 uh, well. We called it Cambury. Yes, they told us it was Cambury. Yes, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Now, when you moved on to Tarso or Tarso. Uh, do you remember anything about the route for getting there? Um, well, uh, the, the main thing that I remember was um, when we crossed the um, the Mai Klong River, uh, we looked up and they were building a wooden bridge. Uh, later on they built a steel bridge, but um, the Japanese were very adept at, at, uh, at uh, crossing rivers. They would uh, they'd build a little bridge and when we were moved from uh, uh, back up to uh, in, back in uh, in uh, Thai, uh, uh, Malaya now, mm. uh, um, all the bridges had been blown, and they they had erected temporary bridges, and sometimes the, the Japs would be holding up the the pillars uh, for the the trucks to cross. Anyhow, they had this bridge just about oh I suppose about uh, two feet above the water line on the Mai Klong River, and we crossed on that. Mm. Uh, and now we've got you. Uh, I'm still a runner. I'm, yes. still, I'm still runner for, for Captain Newton. Yes. Are we on again? Yes. Um, yep. I, I was still a runner. Uh, 